then we start noticing the lightning behind us. And now, when I say this is red lightning, I'm not joking. There were red lightning strikes in the sky behind us. And you can see it in the in the mirrors you know, flashing every now and then. And my brother goes like, whoa, did you see that? We're yelling at each other across the bikes while we're running 100 miles an hour. And the weather radar continues to make this statement saying, deadly lightning, see shelter immediately. And like, there's nowhere to see shelter. I mean, we're in the middle of a desert on a road with nothing. We're on our bikes. We're the tallest thing around us for like miles and miles. There's nothing taller than us on this, on this desert out here. Cool, horse and buggy. Hello everybody. Welcome to the Moto Mangi channel on this beautiful Pennsylvania day. A little warm, but skies are partly cloudy with blue skies. Weather's not great. Nice little breeze. I hope you're having good weather too, wherever you are. A few weeks ago, well, a few days ago from when I'm filming this video, but by the time this video airs on, it gets posted to YouTube, it'll be a few weeks ago. <laughs> So I'll say a few weeks ago, another motor vlogger by the name of Bodine 52 made a video called Stupid Motorcycle Decisions, where he listed out a bunch of uh, mistakes he made while riding and bad decisions he's made while riding over the many years. And I made a comment on his video where I talked about, mentioned one of the most stupid decisions I ever made while, mo while riding motorcycle. I wasn't alone though, my brother was with me too, so I can blame my brother for the bad decision, but we both did it. Cause it's kind of a neat story. It's one of my, like, I don't know, if you ride motorcycle long enough, you're sure to collect a bunch of your favorite moments of riding that you've ever, you know, experienced while riding a motorcycle. And this story, while being one of the most stupid decisions we ever made while riding, my brother and I, I mean, it was dumb. It was also pretty thrilling and terrifying and extremely memorable. <laughs> so here, I'll explain what happened. My brother and I were on a trip out to the West Coast. I believe we went to California on this trip. I don't think this was one of our Oregon trips. I think it was California. I'm pretty sure it was California. And we were on our way home from California, back to Pennsylvania. And we were riding across US 50 through Nevada. Now, this was sometime between 2011 and 2016. I'm not sure exactly what the year it was anymore. I know I was on my 2011 Roguelite Ultra because my 2011 Roguelite had the, a weather radio on it. Meaning like it had a CB on it and part of the CB package was a weather radio, a bunch of channels you could tune into to get local radio. That was like a, like an automated weather observation type thing where it was all over recordings, you know, of people giving their weather outlook for the area, that kind of thing. It was an awesome feature. My brother's street glide, both, both his street glide and my road glide had it. It was a great feature for when you're going across country to tune into the weather for your area and see what kind of weather you're, you're expecting or having. It was, it was handy. My 2016 road glide didn't have it. I think probably because it didn't have a CB on it. That's probably why they got rid of that feature, but I missed it. That's a great feature. So, we're cruising across US 50 through Nevada. And US 50 East through Nevada is a pretty awesome road. Well, I don't know if it's my favorite roads I've ever ridden on, but it's very memorable because you're riding through Nevada desert for like gas for 20 miles at a time. But each section of the desert is divided by mountain ranges going north to south. So as you're riding eastward, going across 20 miles of desert, 23 miles at a, at a time, and it's hot because you know, you're down in the, in the desert and there's you know nothing around you from for miles just cactuses just cacti just cacti and desert <laughs> but there's no speed limit so you can cruise across us 50 as fast as you want so my brother and i you know we are on our bikes and we say well let's open them up a little bit so we're cruising like 90 100 miles an hour across the desert 
But each section of the desert is divided by mountain ranges where you climb up really high in the mountain ranges. You go over the ridge line and come back down to the, the more desert again for 20, 30 miles. So you'll bake your butt off for like in a hundred degree weather for half an hour or so. And then you climb up into mountain range elevations where you're actually cold and chilly. <laughs> but by the time you get cold enough to worry about it, you come back down again, back in the desert. And on top of the mountain ranges, some of them have snow on and everything. I mean, it's pretty wild. Great views too from the top of the roads, from the top of the ridges. Even down in the, the desert areas, you can see like five, 10 miles ahead of you at any time. So you'll be riding across the desert and you'll see a car ahead of you. And you think you're gaining on it, but you don't get close to the car for like half an hour because it's just so far ahead of you. You can just see that far. Pretty awesome road. But we're riding across US 50 Nevada. We're making for the town of Ely. I'm not sure if it's pronounced Eli or Ely. I know it's spelled E-L-Y. Uh, right on the edge of Nevada, the Nevada-Utah border. I'm gonna call it Ely because I think it's what it's pronounced, but I'm not sure. And we're cruising across 50 and we get to Ely, but we get there in good time because we were going so damn fast. <laughs> so we get to Ely and it's like, you know, we still have a couple hours of, of daylight to ride. So we stop and we get gas in, in Ely and we decide we're going to head off to the next town along the way, along US 50, which happens to be Delta over in Utah. It was about two hours away, but we had like three hours of daylight, we figured, so we got, we're good to go. Let's put some more miles on. But we go inside, we had to go inside to pay for, for our gas. We go in to pay for our gas and the gas attendant looks at us and he goes, you know, you guys stop for the night here. And we're like, nah, we're going to press on to Delta. <laughs> And the attendant goes, I'm not sure you want to do that. They're calling for some pretty wicked storms coming through here later on. And the storms come through here fast, so you might want to stop here for the day and call it quits. And we're like, nah, the storm's coming from west to east. We'll be ahead of it. We'll be fine. So we pay for gas and we head on. Now, this is early. Like, it must be around 2012, 2013 time frame. I'm not sure. I know I was with Deer when, at the time because I remember calling Deer and talking to her during the trip, but we didn't have smartphones yet, my brother and I. It was before we had smartphones. In fact, I still had a flip phone. It was a Sprint flip phone, clamshell, whatever you call them. It looked like a Star Trek walkie-talkie, like a Star Trek communicator. <laughs> so we couldn't check our weather radars or anything because our phones didn't do that kind of stuff. We didn't have smartphones. And we tuned on the weather radar, the bikes before we left the gas station in Ely. And it said severe storm outlook for like later in the night type thing. So we figured, ah, something like we're good. So we head off east towards Delta, Utah, right on US 50. And we're on the road for half an hour before we climb another mountain range. And this mountain range had an overlook at the top of it. So we pulled over and looked at the overlook for the view. And it was an awesome view, it was great. I might have pictures. I'll have to look for some pictures of my picture directory of my computer. If I have pictures of the overlook from I'm talking about, I'll post it here, but I don't know if I do or don't. I have to check. Anyway, we stop at the overlook and we look back towards the west, towards Ely, and the horizon is just dark. I mean, we see like ominous dark clouds across the entire horizon back behind us. But we're like, well, let's get going then, you know, we're gonna do our best to stay ahead of this storm. <laughs> so we head back on our bikes and got back going east towards Delta. And we get to the bottom of the ridge or back in the desert. And from this section, it's, just, it's like flat. The desert is flat all the way to Delta. Like there's no more mountain ranges. This is the last one. And we're riding across US 50. And after a little bit, we noticed that the sky behind us is dark even over the mountain range. And here now, the weather radar had changed its recording because now it's saying deadly lightning storms take shelter immediately. <laughs> and we're like, what the heck? That changed fast. And this is the weather radar for Delta, Utah. So that's where we're going. It's still ahead of us by like an hour, an hour and a half. So we decide we're not gonna put our races on. We're just gonna gun it for Delta and get there before the storm hits us. So we get back on the bikes and we just cruise like, like 100 plus miles an hour. We are racing across the desert. 
And again, I mean, you can see far ahead of you. And, you know, so there's not like, like if anything's walking out on the road or anything's coming in our way, we'll see it long before we even come across it. But there was no traffic. I mean, the road was barren, it was empty, which was kind of awesome. But, so the further east we ride, the closer to Delta we get, the darker and darker the sky gets behind us. And it seems like it's closing in on us. Like, we're going 100 miles an hour across US 50, but it just feels like this storm is gaining on us. And then we start noticing the lightning behind us. And now, when I say this is red lightning, I'm not joking. There were red lightning strikes in the sky behind us. And you can see it in the in the mirrors, you know, flashing every now and then. And my brother goes like, whoa, did you see that? We're yelling at each other across the bikes while we're running 100 miles an hour. And the weather radar continues to make this statement saying, deadly lightning, see shelter immediately. And like, there's nowhere to see shelter. I mean, we're in the middle of a desert on a road with nothing. We're on our bikes. We're the tallest thing around us for like miles and miles. There's nothing taller than us on this, on this desert out here. Even the cacti were lower than us. So we're like, you know, we got no choice. We're just gonna gut it. We gotta go, we gotta keep going forward. We can't turn around. There's nowhere else to go. There's nowhere to turn off. So we press on and the closer we get to Delta, the closer that storm gets to us. And after a while, it begins to like wrap around us to the north. Like, like the darkness was behind us and to the north of us. And we're like going a little bit north east at that point towards Delta. And we're like wondering, who's gonna get to Delta first, us or the storm? <laughs> and I mean, this storm looked like something right out of Mordor from Lord of the Rings. It was just terrifying looking. The closer we got to Delta, like the darker, the, it got in front of us too, but not like storm darker, like just lack of light darker. <laughs> And after a while, we could see the lights of Delta, the city of Delta on the horizon. So I'm thinking, oh, thank God, we're close to Delta, we're almost there. Except, yeah, it's the freaking desert. So we saw like the lights of Delta, the city of Delta on the horizon, like a half hour before we ever got to Delta. We're like miles and miles away from the city. We could see it, but we, just weren't, we weren't getting any closer to it. <laughs> and this storm is starting to wrap around us and there's light, and now there's red lightning to the left of us and behind us. It's getting scary by this point. Like we're actually a little bit scared because it's lightning strikes are a lot. It's like a lot of lightning. Like two or three lightning strikes a minute, pretty much. Red lightning. It's some blue lightning, but white lightning. It's just raw colors. It was like, it's all, it's kind of beautiful to be honest. It really was in hindsight. But at the moment we were riding, it was terrifying. But uh, man, and you can just feel it in the air. Like, like the air felt charged. Well, we finally do get the Delta and it's pitch dark, like this, this blackness all around us. But it was like 7.30 at night, so it wasn't like it was nighttime. It was just dark because of the storm and the storm behind us is blocking the sunshine out from the sun setting behind us. So there was no light ahead of us, it's just darkness. Well, we rolled in the Delta, we no sooner pulled into the hotel, found a room and literally like a minute after we got our room and went out to park the bikes, like the monsoon just started pouring and the storm hit Delta and it was just st stu stupendously hard rain, strong winds and lightning, all just crazy lightning. He used to say we parked the bikes, we went and went into our room and <laughs> just count our blessings pretty much. If only we decided to stay in Ely for the night like the gas attendant told us to. And we, we talked about it, we debated it, but we decided, nah, we know better, we'll make it. We got plenty of time. The store's behind us. We'll be, we'll beat it there. We were barely wrong. <laughs> I mean, in hindsight, we were right, but barely. I mean, we almost got caught in the middle of a desert by a severe rain and thunderstorm with red, deadly lightning in it. So that was a dumb decision. That was a very stupid decision to do. In hindsight, when we heard there was a storm coming, a bad storm, we probably should have just bunked for the night and called it a day. And I've ridden in bad storms before. It was my first time in a bad storm, but this is probably one of the worst storms I've ever been in. It was just terrifying, but yet yeah, beautiful too. Like I wish I had my cameras back then, my, moto, my GoPros. If I had been moto vlogging back then, I could have filmed this storm just taking off like that because it was something to behold. I mean, 
It was a force of nature, I'll tell you what. <laughs> so yeah, Boating 52 made a whole list of bad, stupid motorcycle decisions. But I got, I've made lots of stupid decisions too while riding motorcycle over the years, but I just wanted to talk about this one stupid decision because it was a doozy. It was a bad one. So let me know, post down in the comments any of your own stupid motorcycle decisions or post any comments about my story if you want to or say whatever you want down there. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Hope you're having good weather like we are here in PA right now. Ride safe and see you in the next video. Just the darker and darker the sky is getting behind us. It's a road. It's not a road. Darn it. All right, back on the road.